Hey everybody, I'm J. Michael Harder. This is CRS 2015. Thanks for hanging out with us. And welcome to day 57 of CRS. Is that, is that all? I was thinking it was like 507. <laughs> Career-wise, you've had you know, a path. Let's say you have a journey, as they say. A journey, like, yes, title. yes, um, yes. A I would, journey. You know, I would, uh, yeah, this um, goes way back, way back. Started playing guitar and singing when I was 14, 15-ish, somewhere in there. At some point, I gravitated to it. Yeah. I, uh, I think I got cut from the high school basketball team, and that's when I really was like, okay, I'm going to have to do something else. I'm not going to be a basketball star. Yeah. So, uh, it's not no, I got my, nah, no. moved to Nashville, um, 1999 and got my first record deal two years later. And then I got my second record deal three years after that and then moved back to Arizona where I'm originally from. And I was there for three years and started a landscape company and actually made money. As opposed to as opposed record. to being in the yeah. as opposed to being as opposed in the music to owing money. exactly so as opposed to owing people millions uh, but then I just couldn't get rid of the bug me and my brother and sister uh, were playing around college bars um, the three of us as a band we were calling ourselves Seven at the time in fact if you even Google Seven the band Seven uh, we had a single out that we put out by ourselves called Drunk Chicks. <laughs> Yes. That actually show, that oddly shows up on karaoke all over the world. It's really odd. Um, anyways, you know anyways, it's it's an awful recording. Given this, the direction <laughs> country radio took in the last three years, you could have gotten that cut. Like, We're still pitching it with my the publishing <laughs> company. Still, still pitching it, trying to get it. We thought it would be great for Blake Shelton. But anyways, so we had um, then the three of us, my brother and sister, and I moved back to Nashville. Uh, in 2008 and signed a record deal as The Harders uh, with Bigger Picture Group. We had two singles out with them, two videos, and then the group broke up. My sister moved back to Arizona. My brother stayed here to become a producer, and I'm back to uh, where I started 10 years ago, back as J. Michael Harder, yep. the solo man, all by myself. <laughs> Back where you were 10 years ago, but with 10 years more experience. Yes, and that is 10 a... 10 years of hard knocks and, and lessons. And what were yeah. the points that you learned along the way that you almost wish you could have known 10 years ago? Oh, God. Oh, to have fun with it and not be so worried about it. Yeah. Um, I was always... I was, I was really nervous a lot. I was nervous on stage. I was nervous in interviews like this. Um, and that comes with time. But I was a 21-year-old kid, you know. Yes, exactly. And they just, here, you got a record deal, and here you go. I mean, I went from playing on Honky Tonks in Arizona to that. It was a big transition. And really quick. I mean, mm -hmm. within a couple of yeah, two years, that's fast. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't go back and, and change anything because it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, I've got to tour with some amazing, huge, huge artists and travel the country so you know i wouldn't i wouldn't change it for the world you know yeah. but ever like you said it would be nice to go back knowing what i know now yeah, yeah. and do it again but then i'd do it different but then it would be a different, be a different path, story yeah, you can't right never maybe in my next life or something yeah. <laughs> like, okay, if i don't come back as like a, a bird or something a, i don't know I, I don't know if you believe in that sort of thing <laughs> <laughs> something i don't know <laughs> What I found interesting is with people who have had really cool careers so far is what was it that initially motivated you all those years ago to come to come here and pursue that record deal? Um, I'm, I'm going to sound like a nerd, but I was a little bit obsessed with Garth. A lot of people were. I was. Um, I love all music. Um, I grew up with the Beatles, the Eagles, Ronnie Millsap. Johnny Cash, you know, the Highwaymen, uh, huge, huge artists that were very influential. But there was something about Garth that made me decide it, it was country music that I wanted to do. And um, 
it was really, I mean, uh, it was tab, gar, uh, guitar tablature books. I started teaching myself how to play guitar, and I could play, I could play the 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 Garth songs because they were so acoustically driven yeah. in his early stuff. Um, there was just one guitar most of the time that started each song, so I could play that intro, and people would go, "Oh, I know that song. That's If Tomorrow Never Comes," or "That's the Dance." You know, or that's Friends in Low Places, or that's the Thunder Rolls. Um, so, yeah, uh, Garth is very responsible for my life, as it has turned out. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but no. Really, I think yeah. it is for, for a lot of people. Yeah. There's a lot of people who <clears throat> saw that and either were drawn to either the success side of it and thought, I, I want to be that huge and have my name in it. Was mind, really, or it, were drawn by, the, by his creativity. It was, his, the, it was the music. It was the music. It was the lyrics um, that drew me in to his music. I really could relate to it. It was the the lifestyle. You know, I, I grew up in the West, and those songs were about cowboys and ranches and wide open spaces, and it just made me feel like home yeah. in my mind to hear it, and it still does. You know, and I missed that about country music. Um, today yeah I think, again i miss uh, those Im- i miss those coming. images yeah I yeah think it is coming back because then there's well i hope garth know, does songs it like um a song like meanwhile back at mama's the first time i heard that i was like yeah. yes thank you jeffrey yeah <laughs> so great bring that kind of stuff back after a couple of years of that not even getting a look at i i mean it's it's got to come back it has to or i'm gonna i'm gonna move I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> going to the moon. Stage a sit-in on Music Row yeah. where they play it. From playing those Garth songs and getting into those, what did it take you for you to learn how to express what you yourself wanted to say? Uh, I think for some of the age of about 15 to 18, I was trying to be Garth. And then I got out of that and started writing my own music. <laughs> I even had a headset. I'm not going to lie. But that was for, for function purposes. Of only. course. Right. Totally. Um, <laughs> what a dork. Um, I think I really started coming into my songwriting in my uh, early 20s. When I really started writing about my own life. Yeah. And, you know, and up until that point, I don't think I had enough life experiences before that to really write anything that anybody would care about. You know, I mean, I know that Taylor Swift did a very good job of writing about a teenager's life and what it's like to be a teenager, but that's a little different, I think, for girls. I think so. I've never really heard of a guy being able to do that. I don't think it's because I don't think guys mature enough in that age to articulate that. To like, yeah. Or that's a little embarrassing to say, oh, I got my heart broken. Yeah. Yeah, A teenage boy wants to go, oh, yeah, you're supposed to be I don't tough. Know, I didn't even female. like her anyways. And I think it's more accepted from, from a female artist to, to yes. be young. You're allowed to be young and yeah. innocent and inexperienced. And mm-hmm. you're figuring it out. And as guys, it's much more, yeah, more you know, pressure yeah. at that age. If you have yeah. to be strong and cool and tough. Yeah. And by, by my early 20s, I'd had my heart broken a couple times. And I was finally ready to talk about that. Yeah. And so... Um, I think that's when it really matured. But, you know, as a, as a writer, it's ongoing forever, you know. Uh, I may be write my greatest song ever when I'm in my 80s. I hope I do. You know, I'll have that much more life experience to write about. Yeah, it's, it's um, you, you almost, you know, I, I hope that you haven't written your best song yet. Because that would, right. I hope right. it's in front of you. Right, me too. Or I'm going to be broke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of writing, I, I noticed the title of the new single. Playing with Fire, or which one? The you, oh, I just gave it away. No, We've the, got one coming. The Holy one Cowgirl? Yeah, I saw that title, <laughs> and here's the funny part. Can you believe that hadn't been written? I, I saw the title, and this is honestly what I thought. I was like, oh my God, that sounds like something either Jeffrey Steele or Bruce Wallace wrote. It was Bruce. I know. And you know I Bruce? Saw, and then I saw the rest. Yeah. Yeah. And I saw the rest and I went, of course. Of course. Yep. It's me. And Br- <laughs> well, actually, it was my title. And Br- Bruce and I and Scott Laurent, uh, Earl Bud Lee, and my brother, Scott Harder, were in Alaska, of all places, on a songwriting retreat slash fishing trip. Yeah. 
and um, we were sitting around. I think it was like the second day we were there, and we'd all just met each other. And so we're you know, we got our pads out looking at titles, and I had had the title Holy Cowgirl for like two years, and tried to write it with some other people, and nobody got it. Yeah. And I I said. I'm going to throw this at you guys, and I, what, what do you think? Holy cowgirl. And they're all caught kind of quiet for a second, and then Scott Laurent looked over at me and said, what do you mean like a, this is like a religious cowgirl or something? I was like, oh. <laughs> no, like, and Bruce, and that's when Bruce came in, he's like, no, like, holy cowgirl. See, he gets it. And Bruce, and then he started playing that, that riff at the front of the, of the, uh, of the track, and. It wrote itself in like 30 minutes. Yeah. 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 That's a good that memory. That was a lot of fun. The, that's quite a lot of people to be on, on a song. Yeah, you typically have, <laughs> typically you don't have that many. That happens. Well, right? When just, that happens, did you know that you were going to keep that for yourself at the time when you were writing? I knew immediately. I knew How do immediately. you then try to, to maintain the upper hand? Like that the lines that you know you're going to want to sing stay there when other people maybe have different opinions. Like that that sort of jostle for control of the room sometimes. Uh, we actually didn't have that problem really. I mean, maybe it's just the the environment we were in in Alaska. We were so laid back. Nobody really... Yeah. Or they knew that you were going to yeah. perform it and then that's just how it was going to be. Yeah. 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 Well, no, not really. I, mean, I didn't have a record deal at the time. I had just started my own solo thing, and um, I really had nothing going on. I was going up. I, was, I needed material. I'd been, spent the last four or five years of my life writing songs yeah. and recording with my brother and sister, so I needed to get back to me. I needed to get back to what I wanted my music to be about um, and not be in a harmony band and start remembering how to use my voice and be be the, the star of the show again. Yeah. Um, so th- that trip was uh, to you know build my catalog, and I really didn't know what I was going to do with it. And then we ended up writing enough great songs to make an EP and and put it out the radio. So yeah, and get get that interesting. And it did really well. We had a dance mix made of it. Um, a guy like, guy named Riley Friesen out of Los Angeles, um, big hip hop producer and an R and B guy. Uh, had him do the the dance mix on it. You have to check it out. It's a trip. But actually, uh, was number five in the dance clubs for 2014. Oh, how cool was that? Yeah, it was really cool. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah, I was in the top ten chart, and there was my name. The ram surrounded by like Kenny Chesney and Jake Owen, and you know, big big acts. So yeah, yeah, pretty cool. Did you have that framed? Like, I'm going to. I really am going to. I'm, you should. It's a big deal. I'm going to. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what that pays. I've, the dance club, you know, I have no idea. We'll see. Maybe I'll get a check for it. So That'd be nice. Yeah, but it's just cool to have that little memory. <laughs> yeah. The trajectory of your career. So it's like record deal didn't quite work out. New record deal didn't, didn't quite work, work out. Mm-hmm. How do you maintain the sanity? <laughs> I don't know. If at all. <laughs> I don't know. I um, guess I just love it. On that roller coaster. I just love it. And I heard George Strait in an interview years ago said something that stuck with me. And somebody asked him the question, like, how have you managed to do this all these years? You know, and, and, you know, George Strait wasn't a household name like he is today when this interview was going down. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, he just said perseverance. He said the, the secret is perseverance. The people that are going to be successful are the ones that don't quit. Yeah. And I have watched this town b- bite up and chew up and spit out artist after songwriter after producer after you know it's just um it's not for everybody you know if you're in for the money go do go to college <laughs> it's, it's you know? something i hear a lot and mostly from people who aren't here <laughs> they'll mm-hmm. have that comment of oh all the record label people and the artists oh they're just in it for the money and then, mm-hmm. and i was thinking that is not true because it's I hope, too uh, hard i don't have any so i don't know what that's coming <laughs> yeah. from <laughs> if you're only if you only want money like, go to law school that's right 800 bucks right. an hour in a nice right. office do that but there is but there i do believe that like george Strait said per, with perseverance over time yeah you figure it out and patience and patience and people over time start to know your name more and more and more and it spreads sort of virally and at some point the tables turn and you start making money yeah 
So, you know, I think I'm sort of in that tipping point of my career right now, and I'm really excited for this new record because I think that that um, – I'm ready for it this time. If it if it would happen to me, if I'd had major success ten years ago, I'd have ruined it. That's interesting. You know, I would have. I would I would have acted like a little punk. I would have got a big head about it and yeah. Not know not knowing how hard it is. Mm-hmm. You know. Or how how hard the people around you have to work and how it all has to gel together mm-hmm. to not only reach that level but maintain that level, which is right. often the hardest part. Yeah. Yeah, once you get there, now you're under the then microscope. Yeah. Then they're watching you. Mm-hmm. Then everything you do yeah. is bad. Like, I'm chewing gum right now in an interview. I'd probably get really in trouble for that. But yeah. right now, it doesn't matter. Cause There'd it's just be some me. handler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, someone come and grab me out of here. <laughs> the last point on the bio that I noticed was um, it describes you as a, as a chef and an avid cook. Yes. And I wouldn't say it? chef because I don't own one of those hats. That's what it That's what it says. <laughs> what is it about but I don't have the hat. and creating? I'm gonna be on. Go on I need to go on chopped. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what ch- is it about mm-hmm. that, that process, the, the creating and the cooking? That maybe it's similar. Doing? Maybe it's similar because I do like inventing new things. Mm-hmm. I stick with a lot of like old family recipes and recreate those. And there's certain things that I make over and over and over again that I love. But I also like trying things, not necessarily like out of a cookbook or anything. Just make it up. Go, yeah. oh, this sounds good. You know, I'll, I'll fry the chicken and put cinnamon in there. See what happens. Let's try, yeah. Yeah, you know, or, you know, but um, I think it's the therapy of it. It's sort of, um, usually when I cook, it's dinner, which is sort of the end of the day, mm-hmm. the winding down. Yeah. There may or may not, may not be an adult beverage of some sort involved, usually wine or beer. Mm-hmm. To, for cooking, of course. Of course. Right. Totally. You gotta but you'll have, have to test it. Yeah, you gotta test it and make sure it's not bad. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and I and I love to uh, barbecue like outside, and I've got a big smoker, smoke ribs and yeah. salmon and chicken and brisket and sausage. Yeah. Well, Carnivore. I'm always fascinated by it because I pouring milk into cereal, I consider that cooking. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you'll have to come I'm over, and I'll <laughs> I'll have to come over and make you some. Make you a I week's worth of food, and we'll get it in Tupperware you for you. I'll show you how you can heat it up you yourself. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> I just never learned it. I never took the time. Lucky to charms? Uh, no. I can, no. No, no, I can, uh, I can bake the cookies, cakes, well, see, you need. Well, see, you know, that's, that's, that's uh, something I can't do. I think I don't the two do. are different, and they are. why. Yeah. I think baking is proportions and numbers, and yes. it's a science, just and cooking is intuition. Like you said, you well, I have this dish, what if I add cinnamon, and you already kind of know what's going to happen. I have no sure. idea. Sure, right. Have an intuition and bake, about exactly, it. and this is where I ran, you're exactly right. I was just going to say the exact same thing. Yeah. And women are usually better bakers, because women are better at reading directions. Oh, but I'll still mess with the recipes. Like the first time you bake something, you do what they tell you, and then you go, you know what? I'm going to use less of this. See, and that's more cool that. though. And then play with it and make it your like own. more so butter and more add, sugar. Usually less <laughs> of both. Oh, I just oh. substitute well, it. But I tend to that I can I know if I change this, that's going to be my outcome, and I've yeah. never figured that out with like normal cooking. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, well, yes, let's, I, let's I, do I, that. I ran well, into you make uh, the main meal. I'll, I'll make the you make the dessert. dessert. You got it. You got a deal. I ran. It's funny you brought that up, and now we'll talk. We'll stop talking about this. But I, I've been asked a few different times um, from fans and other sources that to about making a cookbook because I, I put a lot oh, of pictures yeah, of things cool. that I've cooking yeah. on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and actually about 90% of the stuff that ends up on there is either pictures of my daughter or food I'm cooking yeah. um, so uh, but I ran into the problem trying to uh, do this cookbook that exact issue I didn't know how to measure anything yeah because you just do it i just do it it. so like okay i want to show you how to make my ribs well you you need some apple juice you need some jack daniels you need baby back ribs you need some hickory chips um you need this dry rub that i make that's got like 10 different things in it but i don't know how much much of each one and yeah so i don't know one of these days, maybe I'll get with someone that's a little bit more organized up here yeah, to, like, watch me and write it, write it down. Yeah. Once I have the money, I'll pay someone to do that. 
I have been <laughs> finishing up with this question, and I've got really cool responses often. Which songs, other people's songs, would you put on the soundtrack to your life? Oh, gosh. Well, it's, uh, definitely The Dance by Garth Brooks would be on there. Um, gosh, probably... Uh, it's got to be a Beatles song. Yesterday. Love that song. Um, yeah, uh, Keith Whitley. It's got to be a Keith Whitley song. Chris Ledoux. Um, Riding for a Fall, Chris Ledoux. Chris Ledoux's got another great song called Old Paint. It's about an old horse that he rides to the bar every night. And when he gets drunk, the horse, he just climbs up and the horse just takes him home and knows how to get home. Yeah. It's a cool song. So, um, much too young to feel this damn old. That's a great song. Yeah. Um, gosh, you put me on the spot. I see there's a million going through my head. It's, I hate to it's say. Really tough question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Eagles. Um, lion eye. Lion eyes. I was thinking like hopefully not something like desperado. More not like des- take it easy. Or- yeah, take it easy. Lion eyes. Tequila sunrise. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is that a whole album? Did I name an album? I think <laughs> pretty I think close. I have an album. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, thank you.